Hello all, welcome to EC Electronics. This is an interview preparation video for core companies of electronics. So there is a lot of people who is preparing for uh, core company interviews that can be a BH, uh, EL or any core companies. There's a lot of core companies of electronics like Qualcomm and there's a lot of companies and uh, a lot of people are really preparing to get into these companies. So interview is a very, very important thing. And there are a lot of twisted questions that can come in interviews that can be from the core areas and also uh, many companies are including questions from C, C++, Java. These are a lot of areas uh, the interviewers are trying to ask. So, uh, from today onwards, on every Sunday, we will be uploading videos uh, for helping you to prepare with these interviews. Okay, so the initial videos will be very much simple. The simple concepts of electronics about the components, about various characteristics of the uh, devices, or all those things we'll be including uh, in these videos. And also, if you're not also preparing for any interview, you can watch this video because I've uh, tried to uh, make these videos as no paper, no pen videos. That is, I'll be uh, including the images of the, uh, the areas which I'm explaining, okay? You don't have to uh, really write down anything to note down. You just have to simply uh, sit, relax, and just watch and try to understand some concepts. So that is the uh, request. So, uh, that is my simple uh, try. So, I am trying to make these videos really interesting for you. And I don't want you to uh, sit and write and uh, study or something. Just uh, be relaxed and just listen to these videos. I hope that these videos will be informative. Okay. I have uh, 10 questions in my hand and I am trying to uh, read the questions and try to explain the answers for you. Okay. So, I will read out the first question. So, uh, the first question is, how does transistor act as a switch? So we know that transistors can be used as switch. And before going into the switch concept, you should know that the transistors has four modes of op operation. That is active mode, saturation mode, cutoff mode and reverse active mode. And out of these four configurations, there are three practical considerations or three practical cases which can be used. During the active mode of the transistor, we are actually using the transistor as amplifiers. That is used for amplifying of current. And during the saturation mode, there are certain conditions for the saturation mode also. Anyway, don't go into the very, very detail of it. That will be boring, right? Just uh, understand that there is a saturation mode. And in the saturation mode, the, sa the transistor acts as a closed switch. Okay, so uh, the transistor can be used as a closed switch in saturation mode. And the next stage or the next mode is the cutoff mode. In the cutoff mode, the transistor is used as an open switch. Now, there is an open switch, there is a closed switch. So, these saturation and cutoff mode can be combined or can be used together to make the transistor act as a switch. Okay, okay. so this, should, this has to be your answer while the interviewer is asking you how the transistor can be used as a switch means you have to explain likewise okay anyway should know that there is a saturation mode and the cutoff mode you combine both these modes to make a transistor act as a switch okay i hope this is clear next question what is the difference between a practical and a ideal voltage source so uh, there is there are uh, certain devices we uh, consider as practical case that is in diode also we go for practical approach and we go for ideal approach. In ideal approach, we consider that there is no uh, there is no problems with the device. It is working perfectly as a way it is designed theoretically. But in actual case, that is not the case. There will be some, there are, there are devices. There has to be some problems. Okay, so, or there has to be some errors. So these errors, if you consider or take into consideration, they will be called as practical devices. And... For the case of a voltage source, an ideal voltage source means there is no internal resistance. Okay, we can, if you consider a voltage source without any internal resistance, it is called a ideal voltage source. That means if you increase the if you increase the current also, there is no drop in the output voltage it is producing. Means it is called a ideal voltage source. Now, if you go for the practical approach of a voltage source, what will happen? There is actually some internal resistance in the practical voltage source. 
and as the current increases what will happen the output voltage produced by that voltage source will get reduced due to this internal resistance so that is the case so you have to answer likewise that an ideal voltage source is a source which is not uh, considered to have a internal resistance but if you consider the internal resistance of the device also that is called a practical voltage source so that is the answer for the question okay next question this is a very simple question what is the difference between silicon and germanium diodes so the first or the basic difference comes with the built in potential or the cut off voltage so we know that a diode is actually obtained by combining of two pn junctions and these pn junctions when combined forms a depletion layer and we need to actually apply a voltage to break the depletion layer or this barrier of the depletion layer to make the device conduct okay and this external voltage applied to break the barrier is equal to 0.7 for a silicon diode and 0.3 for a germanium diode this is very common thing everybody will be knowing this so you have to answer this first next the heat resistance of silicon diode is greater than germanium diode that is the next thing and also the voltage rating is also greater for silicon diodes compared to germanium diodes and you have to say this thing also that we mostly prefer silicon diodes over germanium diodes due to these two categories or these two things that the heat resistance and the voltage rating voltage rating and heat resistance is good for silicon diode as compared to germanium diodes okay so that is the next question next question active and passive components what is the difference between an active component and a passive component so if you are working in a real core company you will be actually dealing with these devices right and you have to uh, have a knowledge about the components and what is actually called a active component what is called a passive component a component if it is said to be passive means it is not actually producing any energy or power it is only consuming such type of devices or electronic components are called passive components for example resistance inductance and all these uh, type of devices are called passive components whereas active component means these components are generating and also sometimes consuming energy so if it is able to produce energy or power then it is called a active component or an active electronic component okay so example are transistors thyristors diodes etc so there's a lot of active and passive components i'm just uh, picking out some examples okay i hope this is clear the transistor is a active component whereas a resistor is a passive component okay so also if the interviewer is giving you some components and uh, asking you to pick out one passive component you have to think in uh, the way that whether it is producing any energy whether it is not producing any energy then it is the active or passive component okay the next question is what is a repeater in telecommunication so we have uh, discussed about uh, communication devices in uh, some of the previous videos actually what is the repeater and what is the use of these repeaters in communication we know that uh, in communication what has uh, been done we are actually sending a signal from a transmitter to a distant receiver so the receiver has to receive this exact signal which is been sent by the transmitter okay so communication means in general also we are speaking somebody is listening okay so in uh, in a real life that is happening and in uh, the communication systems what is happening the signal is sent from the transmitter and we want the receiver to pick out the same signal sent by the receiver but what happens during the path the signal is been sent through air right by modulation or many other means but what is happening is that the power of the signal is being uh, reduced or it is getting degraded so the signal will get weaker and weaker as it travel through the distance for this path so the aim of this repeater is to actually the power boost of the signals so generally repeaters are used for energizing the signals 
or power amplifiers are used as repeaters. Okay, so I hope the concept is clear. Repeaters are actually used for energizing the signals that is being transmitted by the transmitter and in order to prevent the energy loss during the path, the repeaters are being used. Uh, not only one, multiple repeaters are being used to have this thing. Okay, the next thing is, what is the uh, next question is actually, what is the difference between the digital and discrete signal? Okay, digital signal means we are, uh, we are dealing with a lot of digital signals, right? 1, 0, 1, 0. That format is called a digital format. And what is a discrete signal and what is its difference from a dis digital signal? Digital means the signal if it is discrete in time and quantized in amplitude or in simple ways if you say if it is discrete in time and discrete in amplitude means it is called a digital signal. Whereas a signal only discrete in time but continuous in its amplitude is called a discrete time signal. That is you have to uh, process the discrete time signal and make its uh, magnitude or its amplitude also quantized to make it as a digital signal. Okay, I hope it is clear. That is digital signal means they are discrete in time positions and also their amplitude value is also getting quantized. Okay, so that is a digital signal whereas discrete time signals have only time discrete but continuous amplitude. Okay, next question. What is Nyquist criteria for sampling? This is a very famous question. Many interviewers will be asking this question because this has a lot of application when going for communication systems. Okay. So what is actually Nyquist criteria? So this Nyquist criteria is actually set in order to have a perfect reconstruction of your sample signal. That is when you are sampling a signal, the sampling rate Fs should be greater than or equal to twice the maximum frequency of the signal or the bandwidth. That is called Nyquist criteria. Okay. That is Fs, so sampling rate should be greater than or equal to two times your the maximum frequency. Or if the uh, signal's maximum frequency is F max, the sampling rate Fs should be greater than or equal to two F max. Only then the signal can be perfectly reconstructed. That is the, called the Nyquist criteria. Next question. What is a filter. So this filters uh, concept is a lot of uh, is having a lot of application in signal processing, uh, digital image processing and all. So if you are working uh, or if you are going for the interview for any of this uh, area, then this filter concept is important. What is actually a filter? A filter means the filter is used for filtering the signal. That is in order to remove some portion of the signal that can be either higher value, higher frequency or lower frequency or particular band you want to remove from the signal or in order to keep only a particular band and remove all the other uh, portions of the signal, we need filters, right? So, this filter is actually used for removing some unwanted areas or portions from a signal. Now, what are the various type of filters? There are low pass filters, the filters which is used for passing only lower frequencies and high pass filters means the filters that is used for only passing higher frequencies and also band pass filter which passes only a particular band band stop filter means it removes a particular band and also notch filter now this notch filter is actually a band pass filter that is it passes only a particular band and the uh, the size of that band is very very narrow it is like a notch so that is called a notch filter. Question is from digital electronics. This is a very famous question. I hope a lot of you have heard this. What is the difference between latch and flip-flop? We have heard of SR latch and SR flip-flop. What is actually the difference between flip-flop and latch? Latch means latches are asynchronous devices. That means they does not require a clock signal. Whereas flip-flops are devices or components which require clock signals 
and hence due to the presence of this clock signal they are called synchronous devices and also the latches are level triggered whereas the uh, flip-flop is edge triggered that is the flip-flop is actually getting affected by the edges of the signal during the positive falling edge or negative falling edge of the signal the uh, flip-flop gets affected whereas latches will only follow the level high level or low level we know that 1010 zero, zero has been the signal so 10 these levels are actually affecting the latches so this is the very important difference you have to answer that latches level trigger flip flop is edge trigger and also latches are asynchronous due to the absence of a clock whereas flip flop is synchronous due to the presence of a clock so these are the 10 questions which i have included in this video in the upcoming sundays we will be doing a lot of videos uh, if you want to prepare for a particular area uh, that can be from coding java or uh, that can be uh, from C, C++. If you want any of these areas, I have to include some questions. We will be discussing these uh, concepts through these videos. That is my aim. That is through these videos on every Sunday, we will be discussing some concepts. Some uh, concept may be familiar to you. Some concept may be new to you. Anyway, knowledge is not a waste. It is always good for you, right? So I hope that this video was useful for your preparation uh, for any interviews or it was useful for you for gaining some knowledge in general. And if yes, please do give it a big thumbs up and also share this video with all your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.